In this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about the salbutamol inhaler, especially what it does to the body and about specific side effects. This is especially important if you are about to start a salbutamol inhaler or you're already established on it. I'm also going to answer some frequently asked questions in my clinics, such as why do I feel shaky and get a headache after using the inhaler? What should I do if I have muscle pain or muscle cramps? Or my heartbeat doesn't feel normal? And are there ways to improve my lung health? These are really important questions that you should be fully informed about when making a decision about taking any medication. I will answer these questions and how to cope with the side effects as well as give you 10 tips on how to improve your lung health at the end of the video. So this video will help you to understand more about the salbutamol inhaler and allow you to make a logical decision about taking it. So let's get started. So what is salbutamol? Salbutamol is a type of medicine called a bronchodilator. It works by relaxing the muscles of the airways into the lungs, which makes it easier to breathe. Salbutamol is used to relieve symptoms of asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD for short. So symptoms such as coughing, wheezing and feeling breathless. It's called salbutamol in the UK and it comes as an inhaler which is usually blue. And in the US it's called albuterol. The brand name is Ventolin. Salbutamol is sometimes given as tablets, capsules or syrup for people who cannot use an inhaler very well. It is also given using a nebulizer, but this is usually only if you have severe asthma or COPD. A nebulizer is a machine that helps you breathe in your medicine as a mist using a mask or a mouthpiece. You can use a nebulizer in hospital or you may have been given one to manage your condition at home. So how and when do you use your inhaler? Only use your salbutamol inhaler when you need it. This may be when you notice symptoms such as coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath and tightness in the chest, or when you know that you are going to do an activity that makes you breathless, for example climbing stairs or sport. When you have a puff of your salbutamol inhaler, it works almost straight away to make your breathing easier, so you should feel a difference to your breathing within a few minutes. Now this carries on working for about four to five hours. The dose for adults and children is one to two puffs of salbutamol when you need it, up to a maximum of four times in 24 hours. If you need to use your inhaler more than four times in 24 hours, it may mean that your condition is getting worse and that you need a different treatment and you are more likely to get side effects as well, such as increased heart rate, jitterness, nervousness and headaches. So contact your healthcare provider if you use it more than four times in 24 hours, more than two to three days of each week, in the middle of the night at least once a week. So what's the dosage during an asthma attack? In a sudden asthma attack, you can use your inhaler more and take up to 10 puffs. Wait 30 seconds and always shake the inhaler between each puff. For treating severe asthma attacks, salbutamol can be given through a nebulizer. Contact the emergency services or go straight to the hospital if you are struggling to breathe. You have asthma symptoms that are not getting better. You do not feel better after 10 puffs of your salbutamol inhaler. You can take another dose of up to 10 puffs 10 minutes later if the ambulance has not yet arrived and your symptoms are not improving. Asthma attacks can get worse very quickly. How to use your inhaler. Your salbutamol inhaler works quickly to make your breathing easier. Inhalers can be difficult to use and mistakes in the technique can mean very little of the medicine gets into your lungs where you need it. There are different types of salbutamol inhaler. Before using your inhaler, read the manufacturer's printed information leaflet from inside the pack. This leaflet gives you information and diagrams to show you how to use the inhaler, how to keep it clean, and how long to use it before getting a replacement. It's very important that you use your inhaler properly. This is so you get the right amount of salbutamol into your lungs and the most benefit from it. 
And if you're not sure how to use your inhaler or you have not had your technique checked for a year, ask your healthcare provider to watch you use it. And I will also leave a link below for a short video on how to use your inhaler properly. Using a spacer with your inhaler. If you or your child find it difficult to use an inhaler, you may be given a spacer to use with it. A spacer is a large metal or plastic container with a mouthpiece and a hole for the inhaler. When used with the inhaler, it makes it easier to get the right amount of salbutamol into the lungs. Spacers are especially useful for giving salbutamol to young children. So cautions with other medicines. Some medicines can affect the way salbutamol works. If you're taking other prescribed medicines that do not mix well with salbutamol, such as a beta blocker, your healthcare provider will decide whether the benefits of taking both medicines outweigh the risks. In the past, experts were concerned that beta blockers, as the name suggests, can work in the opposite way to a beta agonist, such as salbutamol. Fortunately, there have been many studies that have looked at beta blocker use in people with asthma, and these studies involve the use of cardioselective beta blockers, such as metoprolol, atenolol, and bisoprolol. Researchers have found that this type of beta blocker presents very limited risk to people with asthma, as long as the recommended doses are followed. However, non-selective beta blockers, such as propanolol or sotolol, have been found to decrease the response to beta agonists such as salbutamol and should not be prescribed for people with asthma, if at all possible, because the salbutamol inhaler may not work as well as it should to relax the airways. Some frequently asked questions in my clinics are mostly related to side effects. The common side effects of using a salbutamol inhaler are feeling shaky, faster heartbeat for a short while with no chest pain, headaches or migraines. You will notice these side effects, especially if you use your inhaler too much. These side effects are not dangerous and they should gradually improve as your body gets used to salbutamol. They usually go away within 30 minutes or a few hours at most. So how to cope with side effects of salbutamol inhalers? If you are feeling shaky, See if your asthma or COPD symptoms get better with just one puff of your inhaler rather than two. If you find you need two puffs for symptom relief, be reassured that the shakiness will wear off after a while. If you have a faster heartbeat for a short while, make sure you are not taking more than the prescribed dose. If this happens regularly, talk to your healthcare provider as you may need your treatment reviewed so that you do not need to use your salbutamol as often. If you are getting headaches or migraines, make sure you rest and drink plenty of fluids. Do not drink too much alcohol and ask your pharmacist to recommend a painkiller. Headaches should usually go away after the first week of taking salbutamol but talk to your healthcare provider if they last longer than a week or are severe. So the second question is related to serious side effects. It happens rarely, but some people may have serious side effects when taking salbutamol. And you should call a doctor or call emergency services straight away if you get muscle pain or weakness, muscle cramps, or a heartbeat that does not feel normal this can be a sign of low potassium levels. If you get very bad dizziness or you pass out, or if you have chest pain, especially if you also have a fast heartbeat or your heartbeat does not feel normal. And remember, it is also possible to have a serious allergic reaction to salbutamol. These are not all the side effects of salbutamol. For a full list, see the leaflet inside your medicines packet. So what can you do to improve your lung health? Here are 10 tips that I will share with you on how you can improve your lung health and lung capacity. I will list them for now and go into these tips in more detail in another video. So number one, if you smoke, try to quit smoking. Smoking irritates the lungs and will make your breathing problem worse. Number two, breathing exercises. There are a number of breathing exercises you can do that can help keep your lungs healthy, 
especially something called belly breathing or sometimes called diaphragmatic breathing. Number three, get more vitamin D. There are many studies that have found that higher vitamin D levels were associated with better lung function. Number four, keep active and do regular exercise. Exercising regularly is one of the ways you can increase your lung capacity. Number five, improve air quality in your home. If you live in a city, air pollution is unavoidable. Even short-term air pollution can affect your lungs. Number six, sort out your posture. Studies have shown that slumped sitting decreases lung capacity. Number seven, improve your diet. Eating a diet loaded with fruits and vegetables, high in antioxidants and high protein, foods like fish, eggs, meat and soy, is beneficial for improved lung function. Number eight, stay hydrated. Lungs rely on hydration to prevent the mucus lining from getting too thick. Number nine, avoid weight gain. Control of weight gain is important for maintaining good lung function in adult life. Number 10, try laughing. Whether it's a giggle, a chuckle or a laugh out loud, the need for laughter offers plenty of health benefits, including lung health. When they say laughter is the best medicine, they mean it. Now I will provide all the links to the studies below. Now if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see new videos that are posted every week and hit the notification bell if you want to get notified about new videos and please make a comment in the comment section to tell me what you enjoyed about this video or what topics you'd like to learn more about. You can also check out my other videos.